Many people who misuse drugs, according to the National Library of Medicine, use a range of substances concurrently and regularly known as polydrug misuse. Also, drug dependence is associated with a high incidence of criminal activity with associated costs to the criminal justice system in the UK, estimated as reaching £1 billion per annum. With this brief introduction, I welcome you to this week's edition of Let's Talk. My guest is Dr. Ifish Chiza, a pharmacist, and I am Uluja Kemosako, with the topic, Drug Misuse and its Pharmacological Effect. Thank you once again for always joining us on Let's Talk every week. I hope you have a good ride with us this day. Thank you, Dr. Ifi, for coming on the show. It's nice having you. Nice to be here. Okay. But before we continue with the program, as usual, I would like to remind you to please and please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on all of our social media platforms. Until then, let's continue from here and enjoy the show. What is drug misuse, Dr. Ify? Drug misuse is any use of a prescription medication that is outside the intent for what it was originally prescribed. So, you know, for example, if a doctor prescribes you a medication for a pain and you decide to, let's say, share that medication with your family member. So that is actually a drug misuse because it was not, you know, prescribed for that person. It was prescribed for you. So if you're using it in any way that is outside of the intention of how it was prescribed, that can be drug misuse. Mm. Now, with this, is drug misuse, uh, misuse and abuse the same thing? So, no, it's not the same thing. So, drug abuse, on the other hand, this usually happens when a person is now abusing the effects of uh, medication. So, the key difference is the intent. The, the person who is misusing a drug, they take a specific ailment, whereas someone who is abusing a drug, they use it to elicit certain feelings. So maybe getting high, um, maybe to suppress certain feelings, but someone who's using drugs, um, misusing drugs, they're usually taking it for a medical reason, but they're not using it correctly. Okay. Now, um, while working on this topic, I actually was like, okay, drug misuse and there is medication. People say, okay, would you take your medication? medication? Oh, the doctor prescribed a medication for me and all of that. But over time, we've been used to drug, drug, drug. But right now, I see that drug also basically has to do with all of this um, other things like marijuana and all of uh, cocaine, codeine. So how do we just oppose this or find a balance between uh, medication or can it also be called drug? Okay, yeah. So medications like, you know, marijuana, for example, there are different classes of drugs. So we have a class one drugs where there is actually no medical kind of no medical benefit for those medications. Um, or those drugs, I will say. So something like cocaine or heroin, you know, there isn't really any direct medical use for those me for those type of drugs. And then as you get higher in classes, class two, three, four, and five, those have more um, uses and they're less dangerous if abused. So the lower the class, the more dangerous, the more at risk a person is if they take that in a way that is not intended. I mean, now we do see there's more um, pharmacological use for something like marijuana um, and, you know, it's being legalized in a lot of places. But prior to that, it was considered a medication or a drug that would be used illicitly. So it, it didn't have medical benefits. So as long as it has a medical benefits, it is, you know, considered a medication. Okay, so with this um, introduction of marijuana as a medication of which we see basically most places in New York City, um, dispensaries are being opened. So in this light, there are uh, medication prescribed by doctor for the use of marijuana. Right. Okay. We are seeing a lot of that now. Um, really, it's it's kind of in the same line as you know i would say opioids for example like oxycodone those type of those type of medications 
they're usually used to treat pain, like chronic pain. Um, so medications like that, drugs like that, the potential for misuse and even drug abuse is a lot higher. Doesn't mean that it cannot be prescribed or it cannot be used for medical purposes, but the, the, the chances of abuse is just so high um, because of the nature of the actual drug. Mm -hmm. Now, could you please give us uh, different types of drug misuse? So uh, examples of the drug misuses. So overuse. Um, again, a lot of these things, I feel like the average person can fall into the category of drug misuse. And that's why it's important to differentiate between misuse and abuse. So a lot of, a lot of, um, everyday people who take medications might fall into this category. Um, it's just so we can make you more aware so that you will not misuse medication. So overuse, um, if your doctor prescribed you to take, let's say one pill a day, and maybe you're like, well, you know, I still feel pain or I still feel tired. I'm going to take two or three more pills. So that's drug overuse. And that's an example of misuse. You never want to take um, medication outside of the dose that your doctor prescribed. Um, another example is diversion. So drug diversion means you're sharing or you're selling to other people. So like I mentioned earlier with the example of giving to a family member, I think a lot of people have done that. Um, oh, this, this pain medication worked well for me. I'm going to go ahead and give it to my grandmother or give it to my mother because she said she has pain. So contrary to what a lot of people believe, sharing drugs, sharing prescription medications is a form of drug misuse. So you're potentially putting someone at risk by offering them medications that were specifically prescribed for you. So you don't know that person's drug allergies or if they have any comorbidities, you know, you don't know those things. And that's why we always recommend use it for yourself. Do not share medications. Um, another example is um, non-prescribed medication use or non-clinician sources of the medication. So again, if the doctor didn't prescribe you to use it that way, but you decide, okay, I want to use it this way, um, making your own decisions, uh, that's definitely an example of misuse. And I would say uh, one more example is having illicit substances or non-prescribed controlled medications um, when it was, you know, it was not sent to you. So for example, opioids, you just having opioids or getting opioids from someone else because you, you think that, oh, well, it's going to help me with pain later. That is an example of drug misuse. Never take any medications that were not directly prescribed to you. Now, can we say that these uh, examples is also the same thing as types of uh, drug misuse. The ones, the examples you just gave. Yeah, those are all examples of drug misuse. Okay. So um, in, in furtherance of this, could you please, maybe as a pharmacist, I'm sure that you would have seen a couple of things, experienced maybe while you're, you're in school or something like that. Uh, for people who still might not understand how this works, can you just give us in a layman's language, not in the pharmaceutical language, give us, um, you know, physical examples of people who have used, who have misused drugs and they found themselves in an abuse? Yeah. So like, I think that the first, the number one example that I always think about is the sharing of medications. So when your doctor prescribes something for you and you think, oh, it's, it helped me. So I want to share with a family member or share with a friend. That's probably the, the most common type of drug misuse. Um, and then another one, uh, like I said, is just um, using medications, not how they were prescribed to you. So if a doctor specifically tells you take this twice a day and you decide to take it four or five times a day, that's misuse. A lot of times misuse, it's not intentional, which is what makes it different than drug abuse. It's usually just people kind of taking matters into their own hands and they don't think any harm will come from it. So um, yeah, definitely sharing or using it not as it was um, prescribed or how the doctor instructed you to use it. Those are all like, you know, practical examples of misuse. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Let's quickly go on this break. We will be right back.
Welcome back. If you're just joining us, the program is Let's Talk on the AC Work. And I've been speaking with Dr. Ethi Chiza. She is a pharmacist. And the topic has been drug misuse and its pharmacological effect. Thank you once again, Dr. Ethi, for standing by. Now, what's are the, what then are the pharmacological effects of drug misuse, whether overdose, underdose, or unprescribed? So the pharmacological effects, it really depends on the type of medication that's being misused or even being abused. So for example, uh, medications like uh, depressants, uh, those are, there's some top classes, you know, which I, um, I wanted to mention that are probably more known for drug misuse or drug abuse. So that's um, drugs that help with pain, um, stimulants. So these are medications that can be used to treat patients with ADHD. Um, and then there's medications to help with sleep or insomnia. So those classes of medications, um, thinking about those and what they do, now the, the effect or the pharmacological effect that it can have on you when you misuse it is the following. So for a depressant, it slows down your brain function and it leads to calmness or drowsiness. So depressants could be alcohol. It could be opioids. So oxycodone, those are common medications. Oxycodone for like pain. Maybe you left the dentist or you felt you had an accident. These are medications that can slow down your brain function. So if you misuse these medications, you can find that you'll be very drowsy. You can find you might even pass out. So um, that's something to note for those specific type of medications, even medications that treat um, insomnia or anxiety. Um, you want to be careful. The next one is stimulants. So these are medications that just like the name implies, they increase brain activity. So they kind of work on the reward system. So a lot of people tend to misuse or abuse these medications because, well, they feel good. Um, it works on this pleasure and rewarding effects of the brain. So people tend to take it more, abuse it more. But what it leads to is this hyperactivity um, of your brain. So examples of this can be amphetamines, the ones that are more illicit, cocaine. Um, so these classes of medications, they they can definitely cause like the opposite where you're kind of on overdrive. Um, you might have a really, really fast heartbeat palpitation. So it's the extreme opposite. Depressants, you will have very, very slow brain function. Stimulants, if you misuse it, you'll have a very, very um, increased brain activity, which can lead to a lot of other problems. So I would say, you know, those are the two kind of big classes where, you know, those effects can um, really be drastic if you misuse those medications. Please, um, for the purpose of um, education, can you list all the depressants and suppressants if I get you? So that we will know that these are the things that uh, we do not need to go, you know, you'll be surprised that most people don't even know the difference between these two right. and how they work. So people just take things anyhow, just like you said, initially. Exactly. So um, the depressants examples, as far as what people would probably have at home oxycodone um, hydromorphone morphine maybe if you're in the hospital you might be given a medication called fentanyl you might be given um benzodiazepines um so those are medications that you would experience um or you would take for let's say pain control so the another example for the benzodiazepines you can take at home a lot of this is a very very common medication lorazepam diazepam these are for anxiety and for sleep so you may not be aware of the class of the medication but these are the depressants so these are the ones that can make you drowsy um that can you know really suppress your brain function mm. This is serious. <laughs> okay, I remember, you know, okay, there's this um, thing that, like you said, that people just pass drugs across, around. Now, take for instance, you've been given a medication by the doctor for a particular use, and then you used it, you didn't finish the medication, and a few months away, the same thing came back, and you felt, okay, I think I still have... So a couple of these things around, let me just go take it. Is that a good thing? So 
I would always recommend just speaking with your physician first, whoever it is that prescribed that medication, if it's possible, like if you still see that, um, that doctor, go and ask them, call them up and say, Hey, you know, this pain that I was having before came back up. Maybe you were taking a muscle relaxer for your neck and now you're having pain in your, you know, your hip. Um, there, I wouldn't say there's anything wrong with taking the medication, but you just need to get that. Okay. Because maybe, um, things have changed within your body. Maybe you have other issues that came about. So you wouldn't want to start taking something that could potentially cause harm, you know, simply because you didn't know there were other issues going on with you. So always just ask. It's better to just double check first before taking it. But 90% of the time, it would probably be okay if it was prescribed to you originally. Okay. So as a round of any other information and precautions that people, we have to take. Yeah, so I would definitely say the biggest one is communicating with your doctor and asking them questions. So you don't have to take everything the doctor says at face value and you go home blindly. So I always, you know, suggest ask questions, create dialogue, create a relationship between you and your doctor. So maybe there's an alternative option. You may not have to just go straight into maybe like, a hard drug like an opioid for pain management. There, there's other things that you could try first. So there's non-pharmacological treatments such as behavioral therapy, physical therapy. Um, those are great first options to try if you don't want to, you know, automatically be placed in this position of potentially potentially misusing a medication. Um, I would also say, you know, follow up with your physician. So have a plan. You know, you're going to start treatment right now. When are you going to stop treatment? How long is this going to go on for? It's really good to have a, a timeline between you and your doctor so that you don't just have medications sitting around. You're not just taking them here and there. You don't, you're not tempted to maybe share them with someone else. So um, definitely communicate, have a treatment plan um, and a timeline with your doctor and, you know, ask questions. Also just, you know, don't suggest anything for maybe a friend or a family member continue to take medications as it's prescribed for you and don't assume, don't go on Google looking up, you know, what you can take and what you can do with the medications you have consult with your physician. I think that's the, the best advice. Speak with your physician and ask questions. Thank you so much, Dr. Ify. From the last, uh, what you said last time, uh, don't go on Google <laughs> to get medication. You know, with the rate that these things are going, people first go to Google to get exactly. information on whatever it is that is going on. And then you get to read a lot of things that put so much fear inside you and you right. want you know, so I think with that, that's actually something people should watch out for. You don't get everything on Google. I think even Google has a lot of misinformation. Oh but, yes. <laughs> yeah. So Thank you for that. I really do appreciate your time. Thank you once again, Dr. E.P. for coming. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And to you out there, thank you too for being part of the show. I hope you've been able to learn something very tangible on drug misuse and abuse. You've been able to see the differences and the pharmacological effect that it could have on you if you do the wrong things. We should learn to talk to our physicians and ensure that we who abide by whatever it is they say we should do. Thank you once again. See you next time.